Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now I know what you've tuned in for. You want to hear an update on the builders next door. Well, the scaffolding has come down. This is a positive step and the first time in over a year that I can say that. That's really exciting. Unfortunately, on the flip side, we've got other people digging up the road outside who I can hear at the moment. But I think they should be knocking off for the day any moment now. So hopefully... A, you can't hear them, and B, even I won't be able to hear them soon. Um, now, the builder's scaffolding having come down does not mean that they're finished work on the house, unfortunately, and there could still be future hammering and drilling, but they have finished for today. So, hopefully this will be... Ooh, sounds like the road builders have finished as well. Awful timing. Okay, you really wanted to know all that, but... Instead, we will get to Sudoku now. So don't forget that on Patreon, we've got our uh, equal sum lines hunt. That is the May reward. There is a regular mode and there is a hard mode and people have been enjoying it quite a lot, I have to say. So we're very pleased with the result of that. Um, sorry about the occasional errors in loading it up. That did happen and bedevil my efforts to put Patreon content up every month, it seems. Anyway. Uh, right, what have we got today? No, well, let, actually, let's mention the apps as well. Now, very updated. Ah, yes, and very relevant to Codec, who features as one of the authors um, in the apps, uh, especially the Arrows app, where two of the hardest puzzles are by Codec. And Codec has raced through all the update puzzles and pointed out a couple of errors which we've had fixed. So do update again to make sure you're not solving either number 52 or number i'm gonna say about 90 which um had very small errors in very small error in a sudoku grid is very serious we know that and we've fixed them as quickly as we can but thanks to codec for being enough of a genius to be able to fly through all the puzzles including his own um at number 100 and to also have sent us or supplied or created, I don't actually know how we got this one. I think he did send us this one. Um, and it's a really interesting numbered rooms puzzle, it looks like. Uh, I will, well, I think I'm done with all the advertising. So let's go through the rules now. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. Good. A clue outside the grid. So let's have a look at this too. Indicates the digit which has to be placed in the nth cell in the corresponding direction where n is the digit placed in the first cell in that direction so if we had a seven here that means that two is placed in the seventh cell looking this way and that's here so that seven would mean there's a two there or conversely the combination of the two clue outside the grid and the seven there means there's a two there so that's how the numbered rooms constraint works i've done a few puzzles with that before, but I don't think I've any ever done any looking this empty. Right, um, we've got X's and dots as well. An X joins two digits that sum to 10. A black dot joins two digits with a one to two ratio. Not all possible dots or X's are necessarily given. No negative constraint. Now, you know, I've, I've looked at this puzzle for a few seconds and I cannot believe how few clues there are. It just seems weird. When I've done numbered rooms puzzles before, some of them have had all of the clues around the outside of the grid, and they still weren't easy. This one has, well, I suppose, one in three, four, eight, ten, twelve, out of uh, 36 possible clues. Exactly, one in three of the possible rows and columns have clues. And just a few X's and dots, all in a very symmetrical pattern as well. I don't know, this codec is some kind of super genius. So do give this puzzle a try as a result. I can almost guarantee you'll enjoy it if you get through it. And the same will be true for me. But I'm going to start now. So let's get cracking. Um, okay, how do we start? Right, we've got these rows two rows with the same digit at either end. Okay, let's, and one column actually in the same situation, the five down the middle. Let's have a look at this seven. 
in the bottom row. What does that mean? Right. Okay. These two digits. So, okay, seven is going to be placed somewhere in the row. Let's just imagine it was there. If it was there, this is a four and this is a six. That's what the constraint means. The fourth cell from that direction will be a seven, the sixth one from that direction. Now, those two add up to ten. And that relation is going to apply wherever seven appears in that row. If it's there, you get that goes down by two, but that goes up by two. If it's there, that goes up by two, and that goes down by two, etc. So wherever seven appears, these two digits on the end add up to ten. And that's like another sort of virtual X acting toroidally on the edge of the grid. Ah, okay. And 7 can't appear here on the black dot. And it can't appear here because of the 5 clue. If that was a 7, that would say that 5 had to be in the 7th cell up here. That's there. Oh, actually, maybe that can work. Then this would have to be a 3. Actually, that doesn't work. But that's for a complicated reason. Sorry, I wasn't planning to fully bifurcate that. I thought I was just going to be showing you why there couldn't be... Oh no, here's the simple reason there can't be a 7 there, because you'd need 5 in both of those two cells to add up to 10. That, that's why, sorry. Right, okay, so 7 can't be there or there. It can't be here, because it would be a liar immediately in this cell. If you had a 7 there, it says that 7... The clue appears in the seventh cell and that would immediately clash. So it can't be there either for the same reason. So that's a lot of odd numbered cells that seven can't be in. It can't be here either because that would be saying, oh yes it could, yeah it can. Can it be here? Ah no it can't be here. If you had a seven here this would be a 3, because it's in the third cell from that direction. But this would also have to be a 3 on the x. So all the odd digits are impossible. So I think these n digits are even. They are 2, 4, 6, or 8, which is weird. Now, does the same thing apply in exactly the same way to the 3? I doubt it fully. But those two are ruled out for the reason we mentioned, that if you put a 3 in them, they're immediately making the nearest clue a liar. It can't be there because you'd have fives in both of them. Um, yes, three can't be here. Oh, it can't be in either of these. This is the simple way of ruling these out because you would need a three. Ooh, what's going on there? If that was a three, you'd effectively need a three here to say three is in the third column, and that's an immediate clash. The same's true over here. Actually, that works for seven down here in a much better way. I should have used that instead of whatever I was doing with the X. Not necessary. So all those are ruled out again. And again, these are even cells, which feature obviously the numbers two, four, six, or eight. A pair of them that add up to ten. Now, I don't know whether these corner cells all have to be different yet. Since I'm not getting any clues given to me in column 1 or 9, I'm not sure I can know that. Now, let's think about the 5. I don't think this is as constrained, unfortunately. That can't be a 5 because it would immediately make a liar of its clue, and that can't be. But if that was, we'd have a 2 down here and an 8 up here which would be interesting. If that was 3 and 7, no. I mean, again, these two cells add up to 10, but I don't know what they are. I don't see... They're not 1 and 9, but I think they can be any other 10 combination. So that is not what to do next. Goodness only knows what is what to do next. Um... I don't know. Right, let me let me try and think of something. Oh, okay. Five. Five is a difficult digit. Ah, oh, you can't put five on an X or a black dot. Oh, look at the look at the top row and the bottom row. Oh my goodness, yes, okay. 
Right, you can't put five there or there because obviously if you put one five on one side of an X, the other side would need a five to make the ten sum. That breaks Sudoku rules. You can't put a five here for the same reason with that. You can't put a five here because there is no digit you can put here that has a one to two uh, relate ratio relationship. So five in the top row is in one of those three cells. Now it's clearly not here because that immediately makes a liar of this five clue because it would say five has to be in the fifth cell down, which is there, and that's a clash. So five's in one of those two, and I think exactly the same applies in this bottom row. We get five in one of those two, and that's a little, a little old X-wing, which no doubt does nothing or next to nothing. Well, no, okay, that's going to place five in those two boxes. Well, yes. In those two columns, five is now, five can't be here or here. So five, the, the reason it's an X-wing is there's either a pair there or a pair there. Now the, the five in the middle column can't be in those cells, so it's got to be in these. It can't be here because that would need a five here as well. So it's in, ah, it's in number four or six, whether you're looking up or down. Oh, that's beautiful. Right, so, whether if it's there we get four at the top and six at the bottom if it's there we get four at the bottom and six at the top either way this is a four or a six and now these pairs can't be four six pairs they have to be two eight pairs that gives us an x-wing on sevens cell two and cell eight. Oh no it doesn't oh bother because it's not sevens in the top row so there is a seven in one of those two cells, and I'm daringly pencil marking across boxes here, which threw me earlier, or in a different puzzle. There is threes in the top row in those positions. Oh, that gets quite interesting. If there's a three here, there's a seven here, and then this can't be seven. So if there's a three here, seven's over here. Oh, that's really weird. That's like a, an X-wing between two different digits. The same applies here. If there's a... Oh, no, I don't know if it does. If there's a 7 here, yes, then there's a 3 here. So 3 can't be there. So... Yeah, whichever one of these... Well, no, if either one of those has, those vertical dominoes, has a 3 or a 7 in the extreme position, that forces the other one to have it as well. But if that's a 7, I'm not sure I'm understanding this at all. Does that make that be a 3? It does, because once that's a 3, that can't be a 7. Oh, I see. That being a 7 stops that being a 3, because you'd need another 7 here. So, yeah. The 7s and 3s are a weird, a weird, crazy X-Wing. I'm not sure. This is doing my head in already. Um, we haven't got very far. How do I use it? Oh, this can't be a 5. Oh, no, look, yes, this can't be a five for a beautiful reason. If that's a five, that's a five. But both of them then have to put one in the fifth cell away, and that's going to put two ones both in the central box and in the central row. So those two are not fives. Five goes here and here. Oh, this is brilliant. Gosh, this is weird, though. Um, oh, okay, seven is two or eight. Ah. No, I was just wondering about these other X's and whether we can... That's the only... It's almost like a symmetry disambiguator in the middle. I think it may be. I don't really know. There is a certain amount of rotational symmetry about the grid in boxes 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. But then these rows have sort of mirror symmetry. And then there's this X. 
I don't know, I'm looking too holistically. I just need to find some deductions at the moment, and I'm not really getting anywhere. I mean, this is one of the stages I thought you might get to, where what on earth do you do next? I haven't really got a Scooby-Doo. If... Oh, hang on. If that's a three, yeah, that puts seven here. Where does seven go in the top row if that's a three? That's quite interesting. There's only one place for it to go, and that is here. If that's a three, let me just explain that. You can't have a seven on a black dot, and that couldn't be a three seven X if that was a three. So seven couldn't be in either of those cells. So seven would have to be here if that was a three. And that puts one here. But what happens at the bottom? What happens at the bottom then? Because if that's a three, we know this is a seven. And now where does three go? Oh, bim, bim, blast. I was hoping to prove that three would have to go. It does have to go here. Oh, it's a slightly different proof. Three could be on the black dot in theory. But if you have a 7 here, you have a 3 here. So you can't have 3 here. So if you have a 3 there, you get 7 here. You also get 7 here. And then you get 3 here. And now 1 has to be in those positions. Ta-da! And that's impossible. And that is because of the numbered room rule. If you had a 7 up here, 1 is in the 7th row. If you had a 3 here, 1's in the 3rd row up. And they clash. So that's not where 3 is. That is absolutely blindingly fantastic, in my opinion. Now, let me just prove again, this can't be a seven because there'd be a three here on the X and that would clash with that. So the seven we've got, it's here. That's a three on the X. Now, is there some other number that is difficult here? Yes, there is. I'm thinking about nine in this bottom row. Where does 9 go? It can't go here. This is a vital thing. Because if 9 went here, that says there's a 1 in the ninth row, but there's already a 5 in it. So 9 can't go there. It can't go here on a black dot. It must go here, and we have another x done. Now, this one... Oh, look! This one, this x, can't be 9, 1, because that cell can't be either. It can't be 3, 7. That's in the same box. It can't be 2, 8 because that would make this cell impossible. So it's a 4-6 pair. And now this one can't be 3-7, and this one can't be 4-6, and this one can't be 2-8. So that's a 1-9 pair. And now this one, that is brilliant. This just goes around the grid, filling in the candidates for the Xs. This cell can't be a 1 or 9. This pair can't be a 3 or 7, and it can't be a 2-8 pair because of that cell. So that's another 4-6 pair. And we're away. We've made some progress. And goodness knows how. Right, that one says one's not there. One in the bottom row is here. This must be the other of four or six. We've got three, seven, two, eight, and five. This can't be one or nine because they're in the box. So that's four, six. This is one or nine. And it can't be nine because that would put a 1 here. So it is 1. And that's 9. And this is 1. And we've just got the even numbers on the top and bottom row left to do. Magic. OK, there's a 1 now in one of these three cells because of these 1s. Um, this is, I was going to say 3 or 8, but it could actually be 2 as well. This one also Oh, no, this C is a 3, so that is 2 or 8. So that's a pair in the box. What's that doing? Oh, and we know what these are because we've placed the 7s. So 2 there, 8... Oh, sorry, let's go back and do that again. 2 there, 8 there, 2 there, 8 there, and the 3 is correct as well. Uh, we still don't know about... The Five here. Oh, look, two, three, seven, four, six. There and down here. So eight 
goes in one of those cells and one of those cells due to the eights in the corners. Uh, that one is five or nine in both boxes. Oh look, there's a four six pair there and there. It's not quite doing enough for me. Um, this can't be one nine, that's not interesting. Do I have to use these four and two clues? I don't know how to. I'm not looking at them yet. Four, six. One is in one of these two cells and probably yeah, one of those two. These have been done. These have nearly been done, depending on where five is. So the only real clues, the only thematic clues I have left are these. This is so weird. Ah, oh, here's something. These are going to be different. Because these are different, that means these two are different. So that means these two are different. And I don't see how that helps. Oh, this one can't be an eight because I've got an eight in the box. Oh my goodness, I've got that up here as well. How am I not spotting these things when they come? Sorry, six, four, six, three. Right, they are different. There are three and a two, and it was immediately obvious which was which. We can now place five as well from the clues in the central column. Um, is that exciting? I don't know. There's a two in one of those cells. Two somewhere there. Six in one of those two. Four, no, four is there. Oh, I don't know. That's probably too much pencil marking. I know there is such a thing, even for me. Um, this is five or eight, because it can't be one nine and it sees all of those. This one can't be one, one nine, two, three, seven, four, six. That's five or eight as well. Okay, I'm going to look at this two row now. What can we do? Right. Ah, there's a two there and a two there. So there's definitely a two in one of these cells. Oh, bingo. It can't be there because that would need a two here to say there's a two in the second cell. And the same is true here. So those can't be twos and we've placed a two there. Now, these twos can't be going into column nine where there's already a two. So they're somewhere between four, five, six, seven, and eight. But they can't be eight because there's already an eight in this column. So these are four, five, six, or seven. Obviously this one can't be five. So we've got a two in one of those three cells and one of those four cells. So there must be a two in one of those two positions. And one of these must be a seven. Ah, oh, this is how numbered rooms works, and it's so surprising. The two in one of those two cells means that's not a two, and that is. That doesn't do much else. There's a seven in one of these two cells. That means that's a seven. Oh, and I've got this four, which has fixed my six four pair, and I've got a six there that's done the same over here. That's just, again, bad scanning, bad trying to pick up what things have given me. I know people sometimes complain that every time I place a digit, I should look horizontally and vertically and see what it does. But I am actually trying to do that. You'd be surprised to know. Uh, it just doesn't always occur. Six, four, two, one. We need a five in this row. It's got to be in one of those cells. Now, we've done a... Okay, one of the twos is in column seven. The other one is in column four, five, or six. And I just don't think I know anything about that yet. What about these fours? If, okay, let's, let's consider. Four, apparently it can't be in row two or eight. We know it can't be in, sorry, in column two or eight in these rows. We know it can't be in column one because that would require both a one and a four to be in, in one of these cells. So it's not one or two. It's not in column three or five or seven or eight. 
wow, it, we can't put a four here because that would imply if you put a four there, you'd have to have a four in column four and that would clash. So this is a six nine pair. Sorry, I'm not hitting control right. And that means there's a four in one of those two and a four in one of these two. Bingo, stingo. So that is now a four seven pair. There is a four in one of these cells, so we can place a four in column four there. Now this four seven pair, what's that doing? Absolutely nothing. It's giving me an X-wing on fours. So the four in row five has to be in one of these two cells. Oh, that's a naked single five. And then we can do seven and four. And we've finished a box and that fixes this four. Finishing a box always feels good. That six, nine pair is seeing that five, that eight. Oh, can I not do one and nine in these cells? Yes, I can, because I've got the six, nine pair. I can. One, nine. This is a three, that's all that's left in the column. This is a five, seven pair and I can fill them in thanks to this one five I've got. Uh, I've got, oh, that's become a three. I have a feeling this has become a five, but I can't work out how, so maybe not. Five, six there, two, three here. Seven, eight, nine, triple along row two. How do I not know what this is? I've got a four, seven pair, eight, three, two. That's one or nine, but this could be anything. <sighs> right, there's now a four in one of these two cells indicating where the twos go, and that's one of these two cells, so that's a two, four pair. Ah, that gets, this is a three. I'll come back to the X in a minute. I'm trying to do this horizontal and vertical thing. I'm looking hor um, vertically. So now there can't be a two there and not there, so we know where two is down here. We've got a four there and a four in one of those. Oh, we've got that four down there. Okay. Five, two, four, one. These, oh look, they can't be five. Oh, well, that's more obviously why. So the five in the row is there. That's an eight, nine pair. This has become an eight. Uh, surely I've got one nine done here. It worked up there when I said that. And it doesn't work down here. I don't have the one nine, but this is three or seven. We've got three, seven, six, triple. Um, okay, let's look up this column. Four, five, two. Ah, nothing. Again, with this four, seven, ah, five is looking at that. Right, so six, five are done. This is one or nine now in the final column. This is a three, six pair that don't get filled in. Bother. And these are oh, five in this column has to be here. These are from one, eight, nine. Now, this is an X wing on fours. Oh, okay, this, this was the X I was coming back to. This is six or eight. This is the final disambiguating X, I reckon. And what's that doing for me? Nothing. I mean, it's contributing to a six, seven, eight, nine quad that I knew had to be there. I don't know how that helps. I think I've used all the external clues apart from these rows and how these are going to affect these numbers. I don't think there's anything. Oh, this is one or eight now because it can't be two. So let's look along the middle. Three, four, five, two. One of these is a seven. Oh, yes, that seven is looking at that cell. Ah, oh, and that's going to unwind all these clues. Right, that puts two in the fourth column. There it is. That puts a four in the sixth column from here. So the, oh, and we get another two there as well. Right, those are all used. Now, that eight sees that cell, one there, nine there. Let's take nine out of those two. It's a one eight pair. We've got the nine one. Three six is done now. This is the last cell in its box. It's an eight. That fixes one and eight. This is a brilliant puzzle. 
one and nine there. Three, six, seven. Take out nine, seven, eight. Well, I haven't resolved those. That can't be the three, so the three goes here. Seven there, six there, nine, eight, nine, seven, and we are done. There we go. That is a fantastic puzzle. That is not the time it took me to finish because this puzzle had been up on my screen for a little while before before we joined. But that is an absolutely classic puzzle. Now, I think I found out that a triclinium is a three-sided sofa, which I love, um, going around a table so your Romans can relax on it and eat their grapes, presumably. Now, I wouldn't call that puzzle relaxing, but I would call it great fun, and that would fit in with the Romans' plans, I reckon. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you to Codec for that. That's brilliant, and for everything else you do for us. And thank you for watching, as always. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.